You're watching Beyond Markets. Uh, welcome, I'm Esther Awuni. On the show today, we'll explore the investment opportunities in Nigeria through the eyes of Belgian investors. We'd love to hear from you. Join the conversation with the hashtag Beyond Markets. You can follow my Twitter handle too, at Esther Ubudaga. Now, the Wallonia Export Investment Agency is organizing an economic mission to Nigeria in partnership with the Belgian Embassy and the Nigerian Belgium Ch Chamber of Commerce. We're joining me in the studio to discuss the investment opportunities for Belgian companies in Nigeria are Marisol Michade, Project Manager for Africa and Middle East at the Wallonia Export Investment Agency, and Clementine Founier, the Regional Vice President Sales for Africa at Belgacom International Carrier Services. Ladies, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on the show today. Thank you. And of course, uh, welcome to Nigeria. So obviously, we have viewers who are also uh, Nigerian businessmen who are watching and women. And the question is, why are you here? Let's start with you, Marisol. OK, so I work for Belgium and I'm a civil servant. So that means that uh, I work. My aim is to promote Belgian companies in Africa. And our company actually does that in the whole world for all sectors. So we choose a program each year, which countries are we going to? And this year we chose to go to Nigeria as one of the other countries. We also went to Senegal in January, and we will be going to Tanzania in September and to Ghana and Guinea in December. But Nigeria is obviously one of the big focuses of the year. Uh, good, good to hear. But is, there, do you have an, is this part of an Africa strategy that you have? Actually, um, where I work, we, we have three regions in Belgium, and they all have their policy for, ex for promoting exports. But we mainly work for small and medium companies because they obviously are the ones who need to help on, on going to external markets. Now, Belgium is between France, Netherlands, the seacoast, and Germany. It's a small country of 11 and a half, and, and a half million people. And obviously, the, our main exports are 85% in Europe. Okay. So Africa only counts for 2.5%, which we, is, we think is terrible because we believe this is the future. So uh, this is, it's not a strategy on its own, but it's my, it's my domain. I have to, okay. to do exports on Africa. Okay. Yes. Valentin, let's talk about you. You're, you're um, here with uh, Clementine, rather. You're here with. Um, Mary saw you're here with the, uh, the trade mission, and you also represent a very big, I mean, a big player in the telecoms, global telecoms market. Tell us about what your expectations are. I know, I mean, you already have tentacles here in Africa, but tell us what you're expecting from this mission. So we are very, uh, I'm working for BICS, uh, and we are very established in Africa already. What we are doing, we are, uh, we are a telecom uh, operator of, uh, of mobile operator, I would say. So we are helping them with all their international communication for international calls. When you are calling abroad, mobile operator would need a hub because there are 700 mobile operators worldwide and they cannot establish physical links mm. uh, with all of them. It would not make sense in terms of business, uh, business purpose. So they are using hubs like uh, Bix for uh, for terminating their international call, but also for, trans for allowing roaming services, for uh, exchanging capacity, international capacity, for uh, in a summary cable, and also for all messaging hub and so on. So actually, we are doing a lot of business in Africa. We are leader in our niche sector, I would say. And uh, here, all mobile operators are using us to exchange their international call for their roaming services and messaging services, mm, okay. internet uh, services. We'll talk more about that because I'm very interested in, to hear your thoughts on you know, how uh, Africa's uh, mobile telecoms uh, sector uh, industry, as it were, is evolving. I would, there's been a lot of progress. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Maurice, well, let me come back to you. You're going to be meeting, uh, of course, you're here with Belgian, some Belgian investors, and I know that they're probably eager to see what Nigeria also has mm -hmm. to offer. But you're also going to be visiting the Lagos State Governor. You're going to be going to some key areas to see uh, what is also on offer. But for the Belgian investors, what do you think, businessmen, what do you think their expectations are and what sectors do you think that they're looking to perhaps, you know, for okay. potential partnerships? Okay, as I said, we were working for small and medium companies mainly, okay. but there are already many Belgian companies that are present here and I have to talk to them about it, uh, to you about it, because it's very little known. Uh, Belgians 
uh, our small country and we generally work and don't talk. <laughs> so <laughs> we have a big sea here, obviously, which is a good example. Then we have, uh, we're doing some dredging in Eco Atlantic City. Oh, okay. That is a Belgian company doing that. We have also big plantations in oil, in palm oil, and we do, yeah. we do the working on palm oil also. Um, then there are, uh, the, well, there are still other sectors, I, they don't come so to my mind. So there isn't one specific, so Oh is yes, it of course, okay. and oil, sorry, oh, I'm oh. forgetting, that's the, pr okay. the main part, is oil that has been exported from Nigeria to the port of Antwerp in Belgium. It's been refined there, and it's coming back to Nigeria. Okay. So that obviously is a big, big spot of, of Belgium. Well, are, are there new areas that you're looking to? So I, we are definitely okay. looking at new areas. Um, th these small companies, they actually work already on Africa. Okay. So they do have good experience on how to work with, with African so, markets. But, but what is the perception? I mean, the, the typical Belgian investor or businessman who has either had you know, some kind of contact with Nigeria, the, the business environment or a business here, mm -hmm. or is still in Belgium but has heard things about the Nigerian market or Nigeria as a country, what is the perception out there? Well, um, the ones, there are some who have already come, so they definitely want to come back. The perception is, is that it is a huge market and mm. it's the population which is the biggest of all Africa. And actually that's what we want to come to. It's this population, this growing middle mm. class, which is uh, interesting for, for Belgian companies. Okay, now Val <coughs> Clementine, rather, I'm so sorry to no keep calling you Val no. Valentine. So, obviously you're a big player in the industry, in the telecoms industry, and we are talking earlier about how we've seen Africa's telecoms industry also evolve rapidly. I mean, we've seen that explosion with just mobile technology mm -hmm. alone. I mean, it's just something else right now. But I mean, obviously, there's still been some hitches. I mean, broadband penetration in many African countries is still quite low, including Nigeria, regardless of the size of the market and the potential, yes. broadband penetration is still quite low. But what are your thoughts in terms of how uh, African countries are developing or helping to change this? And I mean, uh, companies like you, how you come into uh, the picture? So indeed, there is a big change in the market because of uh, the increased uh, smartphone penetration. Mm -hmm. uh, users are using less traditional service, which is uh, like normal telephony, I would say, the, the usual or telephony services. They are using OTT to uh, make calls, international calls. And actually, international calls were, were a big uh, revenue for the mobile operator, because it was, you know, a high price to call into Africa, so it's heavily taxed for the, from the government, and also uh, mobile operators were using this revenue to, to finance and to deploy their national network. And the challenge is, because of the low RPU, the low uh, uh, average revenue per user, it's okay. more or less $10 mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, in average across uh, sub-Saharan Africa, of course, they have uh, more data, so basically there is, uh, the internet consumption is increasing because of the smartphone and the application, but they don't, there is a revenue gap between the lose, the loss of international okay. revenue, and the, which is not compensated by the increase of uh, national data revenue. So that's a big uh, challenge for the mobile operator to compensate the loss of international revenue by the, the competition of OTT. Okay, what about investment replacing in? their, uh, okay. their core, business, uh, core business, which, uh, which is uh, transporting calls mm, absolutely. and messaging. And, uh, what about investment in the telecoms infrastructure? What are your thoughts on that? So, of course, it's a heavy investment for, so it's a very competitive market on the national, uh, you know, uh, on the national, the RPU is very low, so it's an investment, it's high, it's a big capex, mm -hmm. you need to deploy uh, to cover all the national uh, territory, and you have, of course, uh, you have network upgrade because the technology is evolving from 3G now to 4G, mm -hmm. so uh, mobile operators are facing a lot of uh, heavy investments and not always monetizing, of course, because of the low RPU. Mm -hmm. And in addition, as I said, uh, the, the business challenge, uh, model which is uh, changing with the lower uh, revenue coming for the international calls. So of course, that's a challenge. Now we believe there are also new uh, assets to be monetized. Okay. And uh, like uh, last year, we bought a company, it's uh, Telesign, it's a US-American company, 
who are specialized in messaging and uh, mobile authentication. Okay. So basically, they are using uh, information because in Afri and especially in Africa, mobile is mobile number is one of the way to identify the subscriber because you know who you are. Uh, via your number, you know, you know it's registered, and you know your, the gender, the name, and the address okay. possibly. So here we, are, we believe that's a new business model to be developed, okay. where we can be a hub for also those data, okay. not, to marketing, uh, not for marketing More advertising, okay. but for security. For yeah. instance, e-commerce e platform, they are interested to know that this person has, you know, bill, uh, this mobile number okay. who is asking for doing a purchase is really belonging to this person. Okay. And it's Clementine. not a fraudulent, uh, fraudulent call uh, transaction. Okay, we'll, so, pick, we'll pick up on that uh, when we talk more about the telecom space. And Marisol, uh, we've talked a lot and I've met a number of uh, trade mission, you know, officials from different countries, especially from Europe. And it would appear that everybody, many people are now buying into the Africa rising story, the African rising narrative. That Africa is opening more now to the world. There's more opportunities and more potential on the African continent. And it's also coming at a time when, you know, this well, Brexit hasn't been sorted out yet, but we know that <laughs> post Brexit, obviously the EU on the one hand and the UK on the other hand will be coming to negotiate maybe new trade deals with you know, Africa. So for Belgium, what is it? What is that? Um, I know that every well. I don't want to. Should I say we all? Everybody wants a piece of the pie. But for Belgium, what is that strategy for you? It's two percent right now from Africa. You want to move from two percent to what? And what role do you want to play in the scheme of things? Well, obviously that is played a really a, on a very high level, and it's not only Belgium. It's all European countries mm -hmm. that have to work to together on that subject. I can tell you. Well, I work for Wallonia. It's a one one. It's a southern part of Belgium. And it, my, my company actually tries and work on what, is, what are the companies that we could attract um, from, from uh, England to Belgium to work with the UK, uh, with the United States, mm -hmm. for example, or with Africa uh, without going through the UK. So it's a big problem. It's mostly with lawyers, I would say, and with all the people who have to do the new legislation. Okay. So that is very much uh, out, of, of, out of reach for, for what I do because um, what we, we want to do in Africa is obviously <coughs> help okay. out. Our main, um, we want, we want to, to have more employment in our, in our country. Like, okay. all con like all countries, they, they really want to help people out, to have a job. And so that, that's how we help out small companies to export. And, and Africa, I think you're African-minded or not. Um, some people are very scared of going so far, either in Asia, no, I, I, either I in Asia, imagine. either in Latin America. <laughs> but, but those size, who come I, I love it. I guess the size of the market is cannot be ignored. At least the size of the Nigerian market, over yes. 170 million mm -hmm. people. Now, both for the Nigerian companies who will be sitting across the table uh, to the, the Belgium investors, what is what's in it for the Nigerian uh, investor? What would they what would they be getting? Okay, I think the quality of Belgians is surely that uh, they do after service. So when we come, we always come back. So mm. we don't just sell a machine and leave it to you. We come back and we explain how it works and we try and have a partner who can make it here. So this is really the strength of, of Belgians and we also do just in time. So, you know, some, I would say this to comparison with Chinese, they would do big lots of things and then they also some, generally in some markets, I know they do bring people in from China. We work with Africans and also um, if you want just 10 pieces we can make something really specialized. So we do actually have very big strength in Belgium. Like uh, we do vaccinations in Wallonia for, for okay. a lot of Africa. Uh, we also do parts of, of the, the rocket that goes to the moon, but nobody knows things like oh, that. Really? So we are really specialized in small things, okay. but it's not known. So we, we okay. okay. Yeah, I suppose you need to put the word out there. Yeah, we'll yeah. We'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll continue okay, from fine. where we've. Uh, where okay. we stopped. So thank you for your time. I've been speaking to Marisol Miche, Project Manager for Africa and the Middle East at the Wallonia Export Investment Agency and Clementine Founier, Regional Vice President, Sales for Africa at Belgacom International Carrier Services. We'll continue our discussion right after the break. Join us again. Welcome back to Beyond Markets. As we continue our discussion, still with me are Marisol Miche, Project Manager for Africa and Middle East at the Wallonia Export Investment Agency and Clementine Founier, Regional Vice 
President Sales for Africa at Belgacom International Carrier Services. Thank you, ladies, for your time so far. Marisol, let me start with you. Let's talk about some of, we've talked a bit about the companies that, that have come here with you to, of course, uh, take a look at the landscape, but let's go deeper. There's maybe a, a couple of names and exactly what they do and how they're hoping to tap into the potential here. And of course, on the other side, on the other side of things for the Nigerian businesses too. Okay, so there's ALM, uh, they specialize in sawmills, so okay. for hardwood, for tropical wood, and they are already very present in RDC or in Côte d'Ivoire, mm -hmm. and in Nigeria is obviously a huge market for forestry, so they can help out on the wood sector, and we will be going visiting uh, Moloko, I think a place here, okay. uh, where okay, the wood yes, is cut, okay. okay. The <laughs> and then there's AGC, which is the Asian Glever Bell in Belgium. They make flat glass, and they already have a representative in this country. So that's obviously for building or for cars. Then we have Defitec, which makes filtrations for the gas turbines. Okay. So that's okay for oil and gas or for railways. So railways also. We have Ukvarna, which is more known as diamond tools, and they make tools for, for the industries of, of um, uh, careers. So, uh, quarries. Oh, cool, uh, so quarries. Quarries. Now, now for, for these companies, because we often talk about how challenging many times the Nigerian business environment, operating environment can be. I mean, what is the feedback that you get from these companies in terms of how they're maneuvering the, the, the challenging environment? I mean, I mean, from an infrastructure point of view, there's still a lot you know, work, of work to be done on the roadside, uh, uh, transportation, just a general business environment that actually can be quite challenging because we've seen a number of, com of companies come here and they're not able to you know, be successful and then they go elsewhere. But many are still here, foreign, and are successful. Well, that's definitely our job. That's where we come in. So we were only here since Sunday evening, and we are leaving on, on next Thursday. So this was uh, the 25th till the 29th of March. Okay. And that's where we can help them. First of all, we put them in contact with the, the Belgian-Nigerian Chamber of Commerce, and she knows a whole lot about Nigeria, so she can her, they can help them out on, on all the problems that they might find. But they are, as I said, they are used to, to people they're, they're used in to their, Africa. They're used so to the environment they, yes, already. <laughs> yes. So, no, but to, to African countries, to African it, countries. it's the same problems mostly. Uh, in some countries, you, you're more stuck in ports than other countries. You know, you have to do lots of paperwork. But that's OK. Um, we, we, we get around with getting used to uh, ha having happy fun and happy, happy people, but maybe meetings being a bit more, um, okay. who has to be rescheduled. But that's fine. Sure. That's fine. All right, Valet Clementine, let me start with you also. Uh, let's talk about the ICT space. We've talked a lot about how things are changing on the landscape. Uh, let's talk about the Internet of Things and how that could also come and radically change things. But what are your thoughts? So basically, there is, of course, uh, a new need for connected device. You know, it can be uh, tracking trucks or using uh, utilities who are using uh, devices to to measure consumption, electricity consumption, mm -hmm. or electri uh, water consumption. So there are a lot of applications. I think we can even not think about all the possibilities. And here, again, there is a need for connectivity. There is a need for international connectivity, because uh, device might cross borders. Mm -hmm. And here, we are here also to address those needs in, part mm -hmm. in partnership with the mobile operator. And we see that large ICT companies are also becoming virtual mobile operators because they will look for connectivity and resell to, uh, to application or to enterprise who will need, who will be present in the uh, connected device or it Internet of Things segment. So that's uh, also a new market. But how do you see us. this? How do you see it for the Internet of Things radically changing? The African uh, telecoms landscape. I mean, we talked about how broadband penetration is still quite low, and it's all happening fast. It would appear that there's just so many moving parts. I mean, on the global scale, we, I mean, we're talking about 4G already. We're, th we're talking about uh, a lot of progression, but here in Africa, and many parts of Africa. So, do you think that Africa can we leapfrog? Is that the opportunity, the scope to leapfrog? and take advantage of, I mean, we're talking about the fourth industrial revolution and of course the Internet of Things. Of course, yes, because especially in Africa, you know, there is not, uh, I would say, a fixed line or landline infrastructure. So here again, there is a big opportunity for mobile operators because they are the one who can cover the whole territory and who can cover, of course, uh, international territory. So there is, it's a new opportunity 
for uh, establish a mobile operator to be able to uh, provide this connectivity okay. for, for device. So for them, it's uh, also a new market and uh, uh, new opportunity. Okay. Marisol, what are your expectations? What, what outcomes are you hoping for from this mission? And are you planning anything else in the pipeline? Are you planning, I mean, if, <coughs> excuse me, if this goes well, are you going to plan another, uh, will there be subsequent missions? Generally, gen yes, generally, when we've showed, opened the way, people come back by themselves. Um, so I'm sure all these companies will be coming back uh, to, to meet their contacts again. Um, we've seen that Nigeria is a very serious country in business. Um, I mean, you really get uh, an answer back in some countries. Uh, mm -hmm. Emails don't work yet here, obviously. Oh. They do. <laughs> I just wanted to mention also that I have a colleague from Brussels okay. who has also, is also um, coming in on this mission and who is also helping our, her, country, her companies out. Okay. So um, the other companies that are here, uh, is Studio Tech, which they do broadcasting, broadcasting okay. uh, equipment. Then there's um, Sotrad Water. They do water pumps with solar energy, and they generally work out in, in, the, con in the country of agriculture. So that's very interesting. Um, we have cyber security. We have supermarket distributor. We have a management training also for all the big companies. We have a groundwater remediation, which is very important because they do skimming. So okay. if you have uh, oil and water underground, they do the skimming of that. And then we also have equipment for palm oil industry. So you see, I think it's very adapted to the market. Um, I'm, I'm glad that there mm. were people coming that, that is use, are useful here. Now, I, I remember I asked earlier for, on the other side of the table, for the Nigerian investors. Are, are there special incentives, I mean, for Nigerian investors, I mean, uh, I don't know, for them to, when they come to Belgium, for them to take advantage of the opportunities or the business opportunities that are in Belgium that Nigerians specifically can take advantage of? Um, uh, the, the name of, of AWEX is really exports, so okay. that is the um, investment, but investment means investment okay, so in Wallonia. Okay, so it just that way, just for yes, it, it exports should, from but, Belgium and then... Yes, but no. what we do do is, is we really want, as I said, partner partnership. Okay. So we help out the companies, if they want to invite a Nigerian to Belgium, we okay. can actually help them out uh, doing this. So, okay. so the Nigerian can come and see Belgium and see how we work okay. and before it really... And if, they, and, if they, and if they spot opportunities, I imagine you probably have an then investment. Then they would have to go uh, to the Chamber of Commerce. Chamber, okay. That's the, the job of the, the Chamber of Commerce. So do you have that happening often? Maybe not, maybe not from Nigeria, I don't know. Uh, from we, other African we, countries we, so we, who come, they see it, they identify uh, some uh, business opportunity, and then they go to the Belgian, the, the Chamber of they Commerce. Would, they would have to go to the Chambers of Commerce, which are private companies who have uh, contacts with the Belgian companies. We really okay. have the companies that want to, to go to, out to, to go over out, to go yes, out that's, of Belgium. That's our aim. It's the aim of, of Belgium also. They have always done that, okay. promote uh, um, helping our countries because we don't have oil, and we don't have gold, <laughs> and we don't have diamonds. Well, you, so, you talked about, I mean, for, for now, it's just 2%. For, I mean, for Africa, two and a half, yeah. two, two and a half of, uh, percent. Is there a? Um, do you have a timeline for when? Okay, we're going to move from two percent in five years. We're, we're hoping that it arrives at four percent or three percent. Um, like or you just hope to okay. just see how it goes. Or? Okay, um, we are four hundred and fifty people a only by by AWIC, okay. uh, You have Brussels having people also, and you have uh, Flanders also. So our aim is to increase exports in the world, okay. not specifically on the name. But okay. um, for example, we also have sometimes, uh, we have a king in Belgium, we have a princess, and the princess goes out on missions with us, with our companies. And so we went to, to Ivory Coast because that, that's the beginning. We went to Angola in the past. So we are actually looking for, for countries where she can come and, and bring a big, bigger de delegation. So I don't promise Nigeria is in the books. We have been thinking about it, <laughs> okay. uh, but it, it's, it's Okay, it might come in the future. You never know. <laughs> we never hope so. know. Clementine, look, looking on the African con uh, landscape 10, 15 years from now, I mean, there's a lot of talk right now about artificial, artificial intelligence, how that's also going to change things. And there's talk about uh, telecoms companies playing the role of banks. Mm -hmm. We've talked a lot about, I mean, fintech companies and how, you know, we might see brick and mortar, the traditional models of banking mm -hmm. might disappear, and the telecoms companies are already providing some of the ser services that banks are providing. How do you see that, that aspect of, I mean, telecoms changing the landscape 10, 15 years from now? We look at the African continent. Would we have solved the broadband issues, or would we have been able to leapfrog and then 
be at par as well mm -hmm. with global uh, globally. Yes, actually, uh, telecom has already changed. Uh, you know, the traditional business model. Uh, we can see in the banking se sector has been now 10 years. It started in uh, Kenya with, uh, with M-Pesa and it's uh, now uh, everywhere in Africa. So I think it's, uh, it's not going to be to change in 10 years. It has already changed a lot of things. And uh, African has been very creative in, uh, you know, using uh, mobile. Uh, handset and mobile network in a different way and uh, to compensate uh, maybe lack of other traditional uh, services like banking uh, sector. So we see that actually the Western world is looking at almost copying this business model coming from Africa. So, uh, and in terms of broadband, I'm sure it will, uh, we can see that uh, it has increased, uh, the, the network infrastructure has improved. Of course, there are still uh, uh, big improvement and uh, you know there are also some uh, some other challenge which is not always linked to the uh, network itself can be electricity power and so on so I think Nigeria is a, is a, <laughs> is a good example well but we see that what we see that the continent is getting more and more connected of course and there is a demand who is driving who is driving you know those investments yeah. we see a much more Submarine, submarine uh, sea cable who are now uh, established uh, across Africa, I mean, uh, uh, across the continent. And uh, so we see already uh, a big investment no, in this. No, uh, no doubt. Clementine, thank you so much, Marisol. Thank you. It's been a pleasure having you on Beyond Markets today. I've been speaking to Marisol Miche, Project Manager for African Middle East and the Wallonia Export Investment Agency, and Clementine Fournier, Regional Vice President, Sales for Africa at Belgacom International Carrier Services.